Hello, everybody. Welcome to Southern Gal True Crime. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for dropping in today. For our spotlight featured case of the week is actually a missing persons case. Uh, this is a request uh, from one of my subscribers and friends that wanted me to uh, feature Jeremy Lawrence. Uh, Jeremy went missing from Duluth, Minnesota in August of 2023. And I'm going to start off by just giving you the uh, Jeremy's basic information and then we'll go into a little bit of the a detailed timeline and some uh, d additional information. So Jeremy is uh, 39 years old. He is a white male, a uh, six foot two, 200 to 225 pounds. He is the uh, last known location was Duluth, Minnesota, as I said earlier. And if you see there on the uh, the picture on the slide that's up, this is a still shot from surveillance video and this is in Duluth. Uh, Jeremy was seen uh, caught on the surveillance video in a parking lot of an apartment complex I believe and as you can see there his uh, tire was flat and apparently he had stopped there to uh, change his tire before head, uh, heading back to uh, Iron Mountain. And please pay attention to uh, the four-wheeler because the four-wheeler has also not been found. It's very distinctive. It is a yellow, a bright yellow 2011 Can Am ATV. You can see, and I do have another picture that I'll show uh, here in a minute, a, a better picture of the uh, four wheeler, but it's uh, bright yellow. It has distinctive uh, spray, black spray paint on the front fenders, and it also has a black uh, milk crate strapped to the front of it. So at the time he disappeared, Jeremy had brown hair, a uh, hazel eyes. He had a short buzz cut, a hairstyle, and a scruffy beard. Uh, the only clothing description I could find of what he was wearing was an interview with his uh, mother, Debbie. She said that he was, uh, when he disappeared, he was wearing a dark shirt, a dark hoodie with jeans, and a tennis shoes. And he was also wearing, if I go back for a minute, that black full uh, face helmet there. Uh, he was also wearing that. Here is a better picture of uh, the ATV. As you can see um, it's the bright yellow, the uh, black spray paint on the front, the uh, black milk crate, crate strapped to the front. Um, the only difference in this picture, this is uh, Jeremy's actual, the ATV that he was riding. He was not pulling the trailer that you see there in this picture behind it uh, when he disappeared. So I have an article and I forgot to ask uh, the person that um, requested that I do this, uh, share Jeremy's information. Uh, this is an article that was written up, um, so credit to whoever wrote this article. Uh, it says, Northern Minnesota mom, I'm not giving up. Uh, Jeremy Lawrence missing eight months ago as of April 20th. Nearly eight months have passed and still one Minnesota family continues to look for answers. Jeremy Lawrence from Mountain Iron disappeared from the Duluth area on August 20th, 2023. The 38-year-old 38, 38 was last seen near Island Lake, which is about 20 miles north of St. Mary's Medical Center in Duluth. Uh, Jeremy had traveled to the hospital's newer location, which is just, just a couple of blocks away uh, from Lake Superior in downtown Duluth, uh, to see his girlfriend, Bethany, and their newborn daughter. Jeremy's mother, Debbie Lawrence, said her son planned to drive the yellow Can-Am ATV the 70 or so miles from the Iron Range and then return home. He had been having trouble with his traditional vehicle, but he wasn't going to let that stand in the way of going to see his uh, newborn baby girl. So he took the ATV instead. Debbie had given Jeremy uh, money for gas and expected him to arrive back home around 7.30 p.m. Uh, close to home. Sorry, I lost my place. And uh, he, well, when we get into the detailed timeline, uh, Debbie did make several phone calls and texts to Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy didn't answer when Debbie tried calling him again around 10 p.m. and his phone uh, turned off or shut off between 11 p.m. to midnight and never turned on since. 
uh, Debbie or Jeremy's mom say, uh, says, I still call his number every once in a while. Uh, surveillance cameras capture Jeremy near Island Lake around 7.30 p.m. A little background on Jeremy. He was born in June of 1984. Jeremy is the middle child of Debbie and Jerry Lawrence. He is a sibling to older brother Chris and younger brother Kyle. Jeremy began life as a quiet child. His mother said he was always athletic. He spent much of his youth uh, in the area YMCA. He made a lot of friends and eventually grew into to a social butterfly. I say he was a popular uh, student, Jeremy's mom said, he went, and he was well liked. In high school, Jeremy competed in and lettered on the basketball, cross country, and golf teams. As a teenager, Jeremy experienced migraines, uh, he had ADD, and he was a prescribed medication for both. So those prescription uh, medications led to struggles with addiction and various run-ins with the law. Despite an imperfect past, Debbie says she remembers Jeremy uh, wanting to better himself, especially for his children. He completed a rehab and started his own business, JJL Grounds Maintenance LLC, and he wanted to be a good father to his children. He loved those kids, she said. Not a day went by that he didn't talk to them. The children uh, struggle with his disappearance, wondering when he'll come home. Jeremy's mom said uh, they kept thinking maybe Christmas, maybe Christmas he'll walk in the door and surprise us. Well, of course, unfortunately, Christmas came and went and still no sign of Jeremy. The St. Louis County Rescue Squad searched the woods north of Island Lake last fall with no results. Rescue Squad members have logged more than 1,000 miles searching woods, trails, and uh, logging areas. And to date, neither Jeremy nor his ATV have been found. Today, uh, Debbie says she continues to search for Jeremy. She is grateful for the community. They've helped create and distribute flyers. Uh, volunteer ATV drivers have searched the northern Minnesota trails. And the community also raised money, which the family used to hire a private investigator and, to, and as a reward for information leading to Jeremy's return. The reward was recently increased to $5,000 in exchange for information leading to Jeremy's location. Uh, people can help by coming forward with information, Debbie said, even if they think it's significant and might help. And if they don't have information, people can help in other ways. I think I appreciate prayers the most, she said. And you can learn more about Jeremy um, and his story at the Find Jeremy Facebook page. And I will put a link to it in the description box. Um, so you guys, please um, go check it out. Uh, his parents, uh, Debbie and Jerry, obviously miss him terribly, along with the rest of his family. Uh, Debbie said, it's a day-by-day -day situation. Sometimes you feel like it's not real. Then reality hits you, and it's very tough. Uh, she went on to explain that they are uh, taking care of two of Jeremy's children. The children do know he's missing and they do pray for him every night. And Jeremy's dad, Jerry, said that they are thankful, obviously, for all the support that they've received so far. So now I have a quick video clip that I'm going to play for you. Uh, I believe it's from October of 2023, and it is an interview with Jeremy's parents. Good evening, I'm Dan Wolf. Laura Lee's on assignment. Thanks for joining us. An update tonight on the search for a missing Iron Range man who vanished over the summer. 39-year-old Jeremy Lawrence was last seen near St. Mary's Hospital in Duluth back on August 20th. Now Jeremy's parents are asking the community for help. Northern News Now's Natalie Hedner explains how they hope a new reward brings answers. Searching for answers. People just don't disappear. They haven't found his four-wheeler. And the trails have been searched by volunteer ATV groups. Jeremy Lawrence went missing August 20th after visiting a friend in a Duluth hospital. According to his parents, Debbie and Jerry Lawrence, the 39-year-old was last seen on video around 7.30 p.m. near Island Lake with his yellow Can-Am ATV. Debbie and Jerry said Jeremy was on his way back to Mountain Iron. I drove with Deb up Highway 4, and I'm thinking, look at how expansive this area is. And there's more than one trail in there. There's trails everywhere. 
And how do you get to all of them? Now, Debbie and Jerry are offering a $3,000 reward for any information on where he may be. Any of that information that would lead to, you know, finding him or, you know, finding his physical self uh, just to bring him home, um, you know, we're willing to pay that reward. Debbie said the last time she heard from Jeremy was on a phone call the evening he was last seen. Debbie and Jerry haven't heard from him since, leaving their minds wandering on about what could have happened to him. Well, I don't think there's been a day that I haven't cried. And, um, you know, sometimes I can hold it together. And then um, then the reality, I, either I'll see a picture of him um, and it just, uh, I'm heartbroken. Keeping their phones close by, hoping for a call with answers. I can't help but call that number every so often just to see what happens. In Mount Iron, Natalie Hepner, Northern News Now. If you know anything at all, call the DPD. We have their number on your screen and on our website. And we reached out to Duluth Police Department as they are the lead agency in the case. They say they're following active leads. They weren't able to share any more details, including if they believe Jeremy's in danger. Right. Like I said, that was uh, I just wanted to show that clip of an interview with Jeremy's parents. Just uh, my heart goes out to the whole family, to Jeremy's family, uh, thoughts, prayers. And uh, we need to find out what happened to Jeremy. All right. Next, we're going to take a look, <clears throat> excuse me, of the timeline, a little bit more detailed timeline. So Jeremy, after he visited uh his girlfriend and a newborn in the hospital at St. Mary. He left St. Mary's Hospital in Duluth around 5.30 p.m. At around 6 p.m., he was reported seen on Rice Lake Road, which is in the northern part of Duluth. Uh, this was by an, an area resident saw him. At approximately 6.30 p.m., he was seen on video at the Quick Trip on Highway 4. And if you see there the uh, route, the, slide, the picture there on the left hand of the slide, it is from the St. Mary's Hospital up to the quick trip. And you can see uh, driving will be about a 13 minute drive. Um, we have to add a, add a little bit more to that time, maybe, um, considering Jeremy was on a four wheeler. Um, at around 7.26 p.m., uh, after his mother tried calling a couple of times, Jeremy sent a text back to her saying, what's up? Uh, she said she was wondering where he was at and that she thought he would uh, be home by now. At around 7.30, Jeremy was seen on video at Island Lake uh, in a parking lot on the ATV. Uh, once again, there on the left hand of the slide, that is a, a, still, a uh, still shot taken from the surveillance video uh, from the parking lot at uh, Island Lake. And it looks like there in that picture that he might be wearing either short, black shorts or maybe he pulled up the black pants he was wearing. Uh, but at any rate, uh, black shorts, black pants, black jeans um, is what he was wearing. At around 7.34 p.m., uh, his mother asked when he, where he was, and he said, uh, not close, uh, when do you think I left? At around 7.49 p.m., he sent his mother a text that said, I'll call in a little while. Um, after that, he never called. She sent, uh, Jeremy's mom sent four more texts trying to see where he was at. Uh, she sent him numerous texts throughout the night, did not receive an answer. Uh, his mother called him numerous times around 9.30 p.m. She called him repeatedly thinking that maybe he couldn't hear the phone over the ATV motor. He finally answered one of the calls around 10 p.m. He quickly said, stop calling, and he hung up very abruptly, and that was the last that she heard from him. Now, there has there have been thoughts that when he did answer that just very quick call or that says stop calling, um, there are all thoughts that maybe Jeremy might have been with somebody at the time uh, that's never been uh, proven or confirmed. Um, but if he was somebody at the time, uh, that would be very obviously helpful information, you know, trying to find out who exactly was the last person to see Jeremy um, after he left the hospital and then try to find that person if he was with somebody and uh, talk to them. Uh, so uh, Jeremy's phone uh, went dead or was turned off uh, somewhere between 11 p.m. and midnight. And after that, Jeremy was never uh, seen, never heard from again. 
um, at least, and I think it's more now as, as you heard it, or I'm going to have an article I'm going to read at the end, but at the time, um, at least 140 miles of trail and 90 miles of road were searched by an AT, uh, ATV group on August 24th. Uh, Debbie's mom says he is officially not on the trails that you can get through. All main trails and spur trails have been checked. He is definitely not in the Clockett State Forest. Now, it is unclear um, if Jeremy planned to take stick to the main roads or the uh, riding trails uh, back to Mountain Iron from Duluth. As you can see uh, on the slide, on, or the picture on the left hand of the slide is the full route. That, uh, the dark blue is the, the most direct route to get from uh, the hospital there in Duluth um, back up to Iron Mountain. It would be around a Four and a half hours if you were on a bicycle, about in a little bit over an hour if you were driving. Uh, there's also a couple of other routes in light blue that he could have taken. I, I'm assuming those are, at, are uh, also roads and not the trails. It's so hard uh, when somebody goes missing in an area like this, this vast area, wooded area. It just it makes it so hard uh, to be able to find somebody. Uh, Jeremy's mom said uh, people don't just disappear. Uh, they haven't found his four-wheeler. Uh, the trails have been searched by volunteer AT, um, ATV groups. Jeremy's uh, dad said, I drove Deb up Highway 4, and I'm thinking, like he said in the video, look at how expansive this area is. There's more than one trail in there. Uh, there's trails everywhere, and how do you get to all of them? Uh, as I said, it says a $3,000 reward here. It has been um, raised to $5,000 at this time. So if you have, let me change the layout right quick so you can uh, see this information. If you have uh, any information uh, regarding Jeremy, his possible whereabouts, if you live in that area between uh, Duluth and, and the Mountain Iron, uh, if you happen to see Jeremy, uh, if you saw his ATV, if you've seen any, anything suspicious uh, in that area, please do contact the Duluth Police Department at 218-730-5400 with any information that you may have. Now, I want to read really quickly um, an article I found, just a little bit of an update. Uh, this is from uh, just a couple of days ago, April 23rd of uh, 2024, is from WDIO, a website. I will put a link to all the sources that I use um, in the description box so you guys can uh, go read and check out this information for yourself. This is family of Jeremy Lawrence still seeking answers after eight months. It's been eight months now since Debbie Lawrence heard from her son, Jeremy. He had ridden an ATV down to Duluth uh, from the range to visit his newborn and girlfriend, and he was on his way back. He was last seen near Island Lake on August 20th of 2023. Debbie is still desperately seeking answers about where he is. She says, I can't give up. He's my son. It is difficult, but my faith keeps me going, and you wait for that phone call every day. Community support has made enough money for a reward, which is $5,000 and a private investigator. I really hope someone comes forward. I feel like there's something more to this and somebody knows something, she said. It might be the piece of the puzzle that's missing. It's absolutely um, anybody who's watched my videos and these um, cases that I share, this cold cases of missing persons knows that any, any piece of information, no matter how insignificant you think it might be, like Debbie's mom says, uh, it could be that one piece of the puzzle that's missing uh, that could help find some answers in Jeremy's case. So if you have any information, like I said, about Jeremy's possible uh, whereabouts, if you saw him on the day that he went missing, or his uh, very distinct uh, four-wheeler, which I did include on the end slide, because that, uh, that four-wheeler is so important, too. And somebody had to have seen something at some point between in my opinion, between uh, Duluth and, and uh, at least when he was last seen at uh, Island Lake, uh, somebody had to have uh, seen something, and hopefully somebody will call. All right, guys, that is our uh, video for today. 
um, oops. Uh, please uh, give this video a thumbs up before you leave. Uh, leave a comment. Please share it anywhere and everywhere you can uh, to help get this information out about Jeremy. Hopefully, uh, somebody will come forward with some information that they may have forgotten about or didn't know was important. And uh, we'll just uh, pray for Jeremy's family. Uh, keep them in your uh, thoughts and prayers. And uh, like I said, the most important thing you can do is uh, share this video anywhere and everywhere you can. All right. Thanks for watching again, guys. And I will see you next time. Until then, be careful out there. Uh, take care of each other and take care of your fellow human beings. Thanks, guys.